we get started, we purposed that we were going to give testimonies um, during this building up to the Holy Spirit. So if Miss Joanne Ciceri would come forward, uh, we have an awesome testimony that she reminded me of, so I'm going to let her speak of it. When we were in Nazareth, Israel, uh, one of our trips, we had the opportunity to be there for Shavuot with an Arab family, and she reminded me of the awesome time we had in the Holy Spirit and with others. Yeah, we, um, one year, and this was quite a while ago, we were there in Israel for Shavuot, and we were in Nazareth, and we were working with some Christian Arab families there, and um, one of the families that we met was um, not only a Christian Arab, but she had been a Muslim. And her husband was also a Muslim in a very high um, political position. And, but she became a Christian. Her husband had passed away. She was a widow. And then one of the Christians witnessed to her, and she gave her life to the Lord. But it was this, had to keep it a secret in her neighborhood. And she had this beautiful home, and she invited us to her home. And she, would just, she just said to Pastor Tifa, just teach, teach me. Teach me about Jesus. Here's the Bible. And she had a Bible in Arabic. And Pastor Tifa was led to read Acts 2. I remember seeing it in her, her Arab Bible. And talk about what happened, the life, what happened with the Holy Spirit and the lifestyle of a Christian, somebody that walks with the Lord. Her name was Majida. So as Pastor Teek was talking, here comes one of her sons. She had older children, all adults. And her son came home. He had been out of town. He was an actor. And he has different um, jobs and at, out of town. And so here he comes home. What, young, tw mid-20s, backpack, gorgeous, I just have to say. And he just comes in so cool. And he, she introduces him. Hello, hello. He's so courteous. And so, and he sits down right there. And Pastor Tifa keeps going on about the power of God, the love of Jesus. I'm saying to myself, oh, this guy's going to get up and leave. You know, he's not going to want to hear anything about this. But he didn't. And so finally, he interrupts us and says, I want that. I want this power to live a life. I need power to live a life on this earth. Life is way too hard for me. So here we are in this gorgeous living room, big, big windows around with shutters. You know, you just can imagine a very luxurious um, uh, spiral staircase. It's a very luxurious home. So, yeah, and for here, and most of Israel, and for here. So anyway, so he stands up, and we, we, Tikva says, Mishita, come, let's pray with your son. Tikva puts his hand on him. I put my hands on him, and we pray salvation. We pray the salvation prayer. We start with the beginning. Yes, he gives his heart to the Lord. I want the power, he says. So we start praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Tikva starts praying only like she can, that powerful, powerful Brandon prayers, you know. And with that, and this is Shavuot, and she says, this is Shavuot. This is the day. This is Acts 2. It happened th this very day, 2,000 years ago. And we start praying. And with that, the wind came up so strong, it blew the shutters open. It blew the windows open. And the wind came through the house. Just like Acts 2. Like Acts 2. And Tikva and I are ready to go out in the spirit. We're like this. And that life was, those lives were changed that day. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's why Tifa wanted me to share it. She does it so eloquently, you know, so I wanted Joanne to do it. But um, that's what it's all about, power, power. Not power for us in the flesh, but power in the spirit. And I really feel like that's what we are really lacking, not so much that we haven't been given it or we don't have it, but I feel like we are not using the potential of that we should be walking in because of the Holy Spirit that is in every one of our lives if we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. So today is a message. Um, I doubled it from last week, so we're going to be two hours instead of one. No, I'm just teasing. But I had to combine some of last week's because it, it built, it, it flowed into what I was going to share this week. But 
one of the things that Judaism doesn't have that we have is this. Does it, say, it doesn't mean they don't love God, they don't have the Spirit of God, but they are, have not received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that's not a bad thing to say. And because the only way you can is if you know what? Yeshua. Because Yeshua and the Father, you have to know them together to know and have and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Every person, especially you young people, because see, the young people sometimes don't wait till you get to be 30 and 40 years old to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Spirit. I got born again. I got baptized in water, and I got the Holy Spirit all like within a year so I've been walking in this for 42 years. Now, don't you think someone who's been walking in the baptism of the Holy Spirit for 42 years has something to share? I hope so, yes. <laughs> so I got something to share with you today. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to recommend a book. Um, this was given to me at LL. Uh, it was recommended, by the way. And it's called The God I Never Knew by Robert Morse. He's an excellent teacher, but he really brings out some things that I think would really bless you if you are struggling with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's a sign. I would really highly re recommend. He was taught against it as a young, as a young minister, but uh, the Holy Spirit saw fit to give it to him and because he humbled himself. And he had to say, you know, I'm not going to go by my thoughts. I'm going to go by the Spirit of God that was, is within me. And the Spirit of God is in you when you accept Yeshua Jesus in your life. Amen? But that does not mean you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's a totally different experience. So I am so blessed and glad that, as a, like I said, at a young age, 21 years old, so I just gave away my age because I told you I've been walking it for 42, so 42 years that I've had the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I do not believe we would be here today if it wasn't for that. The Holy Spirit led us to our Hebrew roots, and within a period of time of, of being in our Hebrew roots, I have to admit I put the Holy Spirit on the shelf, and I think we all do that. Not just because of Hebrew roots, but, you know, oh, it's, you, you, ta you take it for granted, right? You take things for granted. You take, actually, we take this whole Bible for granted. Because we can open it up any time at any minute. There are countries where you can even have a Bible. So I just re really want to encourage you, as I go through this teaching today, I'm going to be giving you a lot. But I've learned you have to tell your mind to be quiet and let your spirit man listen. You know, the Spirit has a mind. Do you know the Holy Spirit is a he? The Holy Spirit is a person. It's not just a thing out there floating around. It is a person, and you should be having a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. I remember early in my walk receiving a book, and it was said, the, book, the name of the book was Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And I remember reading it and saying, wow, I can talk every morning, wake up and talk to the Holy Spirit. So this is a very powerful gift that God has poured out upon us, and we do not want to take it for granted. So this message is going to be for those who have never heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, those who want to receive it, those who have received it but are not using it, and those who maybe need to be encouraged and refreshed that the Holy Spirit is with you. Maybe you need to be refilled or refreshed. You know, I, I, I love worship because I think worship refreshes us and refills us if we are acknowledging, I need, I need to be refilled, Lord. I need, my tank is running low. So that's when we come in and we ask of God for what we need. Amen. So Acts 2.33 says, Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. So this promised Holy Spirit was given to Yeshua from the Father, and he in turn poured it out on us. He's sharing it. Yeshua is sharing the goods. Everything that you need, he is sharing it with us. That's why he said it was, it, it was pertinent that he left the disciples because Yeshua could only minister to those he was in contact with, right? But now the Holy Spirit can minister everywhere. 
See how much, see how much more important? So we don't need Yeshua standing here right now talking to us, do we? Because the Holy Spirit is Yeshua talking to us. You know, I saw a parallel because this is the Feast of Shavuot. And at the Feast of Shavuot, when Moses received the law from the Father at Mount Sinai, he brought it down and he gave it to the people. What, what did Yeshua do? It was given, uh, the Holy Spirit was given to Yeshua from the Father, and he in turn poured it out on us. See the parallel. A Shavuot was the giving of the Torah, the instructions, and the giving of the Spirit. It's the spirit of the Torah that we are to walk in. The Torah is not done away with. The gifts are not done away with. We always want to do away with everything. That's the enemy. The enemy wants to do away with it because it's going to be powerful in your life. So all three baptisms are important. Before we can really receive, because they lead us to what? Righteous living. We're still in the season of Shavuot, meaning the promise of the Spirit is still being poured out on the believers. So this feast is active, and it is being fulfilled today in us. According to Joel 2, 28 through 29, he was going to pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. And what were you going to do? What were the sons and daughters going to do? Prophesy. They're going to speak the Word of God. You know, Ezekiel prophesied of this day and says in 36, 27, I will pour out my spirit and put it within you. Ezekiel was prophesied, I will put my spirit within you. This is a promise of power. This was a promise of power back into the time of Ezekiel. John the Baptist promised that Yeshua would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. This was a general promise made to all those who were being converted and baptized by him in water. So in Matthew 3.11, it says, I baptize you with water to show that you have repented. But the one who will come after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Do you see the two different baptisms? So in order to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to walk in it, you have to go through the process, the three baptisms. And this is all outlined in Acts chapter 8. We will not read it, but you can do your own study. One, the baptism into salvation, which is the outer court of the tabernacle, which brings you to God the Father, and it is the Passover. Number two, the next step is baptism in water for a new creation. It's the inner court, and you're baptized into the Son, Yeshua. And this is Shavuot coming up brings us, it ties us into tabernacles, which is the baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire, which brings us to God, the Holy Spirit of tabernacles. So you see the process of the tabernacle, how it goes along with our salvation, the salvation plan today. But God put, but God is one, but he's manifested in three persons. And how do we know that? Because if it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but yet Mark 12, 29 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And I'm not going to get into the whole explanation of three being one. How can that be? We should, we should, that's common sense. We're three-part beings. It's just, you know, it's not difficult. So this makes him a personal God. Where does the Holy Spirit come from? The Father through Yeshua, his Son. And I gave you Acts 2.33 already on that. So we see that all three baptisms are important. All three are instructions for righteous living. Now, we want to talk about Torah, but this is Torah too. These are instructions from the Father to give us as the new covenant believers so that we will be empowered to live this walk and walk this walk. The old covenant believers were not empowered in their inner being. There were times of being um, overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, but it didn't indwell them. So they were on their own. Then Yeshua came, and then the disciples said, oh, we're on our own, <laughs> until what? They received the Holy Spirit, and they were power packs. We are not living to the potential that the Holy Spirit that we have that indwells in us. We are not doing that, and I am going to come up with some reasons why I feel like we're not doing that. Just like the Torah commands are for our good, so are these commands. Yeshua had a great work for us to do down through the ages. He knew they would, 
that they and he could never do it in their own strength. He knew this. In Acts 2, he told his followers to wait until they received the power of the Holy Spirit, and then they would be his witnesses. Sometimes I wonder when people are not being a good witness for God, have they got the power to be the witness for God? You know, Yeshua's ministry never started till after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And really, either shall, either shall ours. In Luke 4.13, it says, when the devil had finished, and this is after he had just been baptized. He just went to, to the John, the Baptist. He was immersed, and the dove came down upon Yeshua. And, you know, the Holy Spirit, we always like to look at it as a dove. But once it came into Yeshua, it was, a, it was fire. It was powerful. But he came upon Yeshua, and he was filled up. He said he did it to fulfill all righteousness. So should we not do it to fulfill all righteousness? Absolutely. We follow him. He is our, he is our rabbi. So in Luke 4, 13, it says, so immediately after he had been filled, it says the devil had finished every temptation. He left him until an opportune time, and Jesus' public ministry started. So what happened is he came, the devil immediately was there to take that, what happened to Yeshua being baptized, and he immediately took him and brought him into the wilderness to be tempted by the enemy. He was led into the wilderness to be tested. See, what happens with us, we get filled or we get an experience with God. We have something awesome, and the enemy is right there to steal that. Of course, Yeshua passed the test because why? He was empowered. You cannot pass the test if you're not empowered. You might have to go around the mountain a thousand times. Hopefully not. (laughs) Was it 40 times should be our limit? I think 40, I think by 40, if you've gone around the mountain 40 times, there's freedom. Because there was for Israel, right? So I've been around a lot of mountains and I've passed the test by now, I think, because I've, I'm 42 years walking and going around the mountain. And there, I can say there is freedom. There is freedom. So we see also in verse 14, and Jesus returned to Galilee. This is what happened immediately as after he was tempted by the devil, his ministry starts because it says he returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit and news about him spread through all the surrounding districts. And he began teaching in their synagogues and was praised by all. That's when he began teaching. But it says he went to Galilee, what? In the power of the spirit. I wouldn't do it unless it was by the power of the Spirit leading you. You know, a lot of times you say, oh, the Lord told me to do this, and the Lord told me to do that. You better do it by the power of the Spirit. Amen? So this power is a divine assurance of good. Don't be afraid of the power of the Holy Spirit. I've had people literally tell me, oh, I'm afraid of that stuff. Even... um, Robert Morris, Pastor Robert Morris said that a minister told him, if anyone talks about the Holy Spirit, don't don't go there. And he was being led to be a pastor. I thank God that we had the power of the Holy Spirit when we started Beit Tehillah of here. I thank God. For those of you that might not know me, I'm Pastor Tikva and I'm the mama. We started this community because of the Holy Spirit led us here. We wouldn't have, who wanted to start something new (laughs) if it wasn't the Holy Spirit leading you? You know, you're going to, you're going to be encouraged by the Spirit to share with people, to minister to people, to talk to people, but you better do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 49 says, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from high. You better not go anywhere until you are clothed with power from high. You better not do it. You better not say it unless you are clothed with power from high. Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. So this Holy Spirit is everywhere. The word 
power in the Greek is dunamis, as you see on the slide. And it's from the strong. And this is, these come from these two verses I just gave you. It's especially miraculous power. Ability, abundance, mighty, workers of miracles, power, strength, violence, mighty works. Wonderful, mighty, wonderful works. And when I think of power, I think, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm putting myself back in the days of the disciples because they were just ordinary people like you and I. And Yeshua comes along and sweeps them off their feet, and they're so excited. And now he's, he leaves them and says, get to work, <laughs> basically. Get to work. Go work in my kingdom. Go work in my fields. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover, you know. Cast out demons. Speak in new tongues. This was he left him. He left them with these words. So the scripture are full, scriptures are full of promise and exhortation for us to approach God with a full confidence of faith to receive this promise. Remember, we receive it because we believe it by faith. Yeshua said that it was more expedient for his people to have this in filling than that he should have remain with them. I just think and feel that is such a powerful scripture. Because sometimes we get all caught up, oh, I wish Jesus was here. Oh, I wouldn't be in this mess if I had Jesus right by my side. No, he's more than by our side. Everything we need is right here. I, I, and I, I tell this, and I know it doesn't sound very holy, but it reminds me of the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy all along. She could have made it home. That's what it is with the Holy Spirit. All along, we had the power, and we didn't use it. Dorothy didn't use it. She didn't use her little red shoes and click them, or whatever it was that she had to do. I haven't seen that movie in years. But that's how we are. God has given us everything we need. Yahweh is such a good father. Such a good father. So imagine, you know, just like God's laws didn't end with the new covenant, um, the Holy Spirit and the gifts and everything that goes with it did not end with the last apostle. Please don't fall for that lie. It's a promise to all believers to the end of time. Amen? So just like God's law didn't end with the new covenant, the gifts is here for you to receive and use now. Imagine, the Holy Spirit wants to fill your life with power greater than electricity. I saw that, that first beginning slide, and the guy is standing there, and there's this fire like here. It's, elect it's, it's greater than electricity, this power. I'm going to share a little bit about the whole electricity. So power to do what is what? Im to power to do what is impossible. But you must learn to use it like faith. You must exercise it. You must start stepping out of faith, even if you mess up. I remember when the Lord gave, when I was given the gift, and still have the gift, but the gift of prophesying in tongues, I was so scared. I was so nervous. I was like, there's no way I'm going to do that. I was not one that wanted to draw attention to myself. And I thought, if I speak out in tongues, everybody's going to look at me. If I prophesy in the Holy Spirit, everyone's going to look at me. Well, I mean, I was, I was literally shaking in the Holy Spirit. I mean, my body was shaking. I don't know if it was out of fear or the Holy Spirit, but <laughs> I was shaking because I felt this unctioning in my spirit to speak it. And I finally did. It was at a ladies uh, retreat. It was a woman's aglow. How many of you remember women's aglow years ago? And I just let it out, and I was just like, <gasps> And after it came out, the interpretation related totally to me. It was totally went hand in hand uh, with things in my life. And I knew that it was the Holy Spirit. And my, my fear wasn't that I wanted to do it. My fear was that I was not doing it out of because it was God. But I stepped out in faith and I did it. And every time I've ever prayed or prophesied in the Holy Spirit, there's always been an interpretation because you're to pray for interpretation. Um, if not, you're to pray you interpret it. But I was always pray for an interpretation, and they, it had always been interpreted. But I was always cautious. I wasn't ready quick to jump out. But there's this nervousness. But I had to exercise it. And so once I started exercising it, it's not a problem. 
So used in the right way, this power will bring glory to God and blessings to your life. How many would like blessings in their life? How, how many would like to see God be glorified? God should be glorified in this place. You know, the move of the Holy Spirit can be outside the church, but it's really supposed to move inside the church. The workings and the gifts are to be ministering to one another, and I'm not going down that path. Maybe later on we're going to break down some of those, but um, there is a lot to be used to help each other with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, power of any kind used in a wrong way will always bring trouble. And we know that with restoration and truth that God is teaching us, there's always the enemy to bring trouble, right? But that should not stop us. Some, here's just three mistakes to avoid. I'm not going to really get into them all, but you can find these, these in the scripture, what took place that Paul was correcting. But some people use the Holy Spirit power as a toy to be played with. And that was going on in the Corinthian church. Um, like even with the gift of tongues, everybody was just having a ball pr- praying in tongues and nothing, nothing was teaching and edifying the church. Oh, this is a new toy. What is this? Let's, you know, and then finally Paul had to bring him down a little and say, this is what it's used for and the purpose. Another one is some people call attention to themselves instead of giving glory to God. If you're, if you have the gift of healing, the attention can definitely go on you, right? We've seen that in the past. Ministers are lifted up because they, that gift of healing is very powerful in their life. And some people just don't use the power that the Holy Spirit has for them. This is the most common mistake of all. Some have, been seen, some have seen the misuse or imitations of the Spirit's power and are afraid of anything supernatural. The Thessalonian church had this problem. Paul told them to test the spirits to see if they were of God and not to accept any false prophecies or imitations of God's work. So you're always going to have that, but do not let that stop you from letting letting the Holy Spirit uh, be evident and, and be present. We have to be careful of quenching and blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. This can be a very dangerous path that we as believers could, you know, because of what we're taught in our early walk with God. A lot of churches taught against it. A lot of churches say it was of the devil. I remember when I received the Holy Spirit, I had a a relative that um, we were going to a church that believed in that, and, and that person knew it, and they said, oh, do they speak in tongues? I said, yeah, they do. And she said, that's of the devil. Well, I was a new believer, and I'm like, it is? I got concerned, you know, so I said, I better get to the Bible. I better get to the, the, the bottom of this. And the only thing I came up with in my own research was that Paul said, forbid not to speak in an unknown tongue. And it's all in the New Testament. So, so the scriptures in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says, do not quench the spirit. Sometimes I do quench the spirit because I don't want to be always maybe up front speaking or, or allowing the prophet. Sometimes I just say, no, no, you just be quiet. <laughs> That's quenching the spirit. He wants to use people to speak. You know, he wants to speak through us. Sometimes you'll be one-on-one with somebody, and the Holy Spirit says, tell them this. And you quench it and say, no, I'm not going to tell them that. Maybe quenching the spirit. But it does tell you in that scripture to abstain from every form of evil. But quenching the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances. So prophetic utterances are utterances from the Holy Spirit. Those should not be despised. Those should be allowed. And then the prophets will judge whether they're correct or not. And then Matthew 12, 31, 32 says, Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be given him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. You know, when the Holy Spirit moves on people, sometimes because of where people are at, sometimes it can look strange. Do not judge that unless it's something evil coming out of that person. But because maybe they're run around the church, like our brother Paul here does, you know, a few times every once in a while. And maybe because you jump up and you get excited and maybe, you know, you start praying in the Holy Spirit. I don't know. That's, 
Those are things that you want to be careful not to judge. As long as Paul said they are done decently and in order. Amen. And then, of course, we see that in Luke eleven fourteen, it explains the Pharisees were saying that Yeshua, they were blaspheming. They were doing blasphemy, the Pharisees, in this chapter because it was about Jesus was healing people. And they said he was doing it by Beelzebub, the devil. They were, they were saying the power of the Holy Spirit was of the devil. So be careful how we judge these things. You know, sometimes in this movement, people want to focus on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit instead of what is the Holy Spirit doing within us. It's all about the manifestations. That's why Torah and Holy Spirit go together. Do you understand that? Otherwise, you have over here, we see a bunch of Holy Spirit, but people's lives aren't being changed. And then you have over here nothing but law, the Torah, and there's no spirit. You have to have the two, the spirit of the Torah, the spirit and the law. That's what was given on Shavuot. The outpouring, Moses brought down the Torah, and Yeshua brought us the Holy Spirit. Amen? So I want to go back to the Holy Spirit likened to electricity. But like I said earlier, much more powerful. Think of how many ways electricity can be used. People like their cities, they cook, they heat their homes, they run their factories, they operate all kinds of machinery with electricity. Because men have learned how to use uh, electrical power, they can do what they um, need to do that's impossible, even go to the moon. So being filled with the Holy Spirit is like having your house wired for electricity but more powerful. Think about that. Dwell on that a little bit. Sila. <laughs> it's not wired, so you can sit in the dark and say, I got electricity at last. <laughs> we got electricity in our house. What do we do? We use it for turn. It helps us. Doesn't it make life a little bit easier to turn on a stove than light a fire? Doesn't it make... Life a little bit more comforting because you can turn the heat on when you need it and the air conditioning on when you need it. Let a fan blow on you. You don't need these fans and doing this. <laughs> That's what the Holy Spirit is, to make our life easier. How many need easy? Simple. God never meant it to be complicated and hard. No, we've complicated it. So, being filled with the Holy Spirit is like having your house wired for electricity. Turn the lights on, everybody. Use the God-given power. Amen? The Spirit gives you Yahweh's pattern for right use of the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to start to give you some of the purpose and the, and, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, the gifts and all that, they're great, but... We don't want to just zoom in on the gifts. Those are just, they help us. But I want to zoom in on really the purpose of this Holy Spirit. Number one is holiness. Galatians 5.22, but the fruits of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Why? Because you're doing it. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passion and desires. If we live by the Spirit. Did you notice? If we live by the Spirit. You got to choose. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. And let us not become boastful, challenging one another and envying one another. If we have envy, if we have issues, if we allow the Holy Spirit to come in, it will straighten that up. If we allow the Holy Spirit that is within us, it empowers us to walk in forgiveness. You know, do you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to forgive. Give me what I know you've given it to me. Just help me with it. Help me with it, Holy Spirit. Help me not to envy and covet what my brother has. Let, let me be happy for them and bless them. So the power of the Holy Spirit in the early believers made their lives clean and good in a, civilization, in a civilization noted for its crime and corruption. They could be clean. They could be holy, even though the world around them was dirty and corrupt. 
That's the power. That's a real, to me, important power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And then hope, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. I love that song. You haven't sang that in a while, Susie. <laughs> Got to sing that. So Romans 15, 12 through 14. Could you open that, please? Um, it says, again, Isaiah says, There shall come the root of Jesse, and he who rises arises to rule over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles hope. Whoops, sorry. Can't do two or three things at once, can I? <laughs> now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. There you go with the power of the Holy Spirit. You need hope, you need peace, you need joy. Ask the Holy Spirit. I need joy right now, Holy Spirit. I am, I am not with it. I need your joy. I, right now, I'm in turmoil, and I need some peace right now, Holy Spirit. The Father says you have not because you ask not. All along, it's right there, available for us to help us. So the Holy Spirit gave the early believers hope of what? Eternal life. An inner joy and peace that made them sing and praise God when they were beaten and thrown into jail for Christ's sake. The next one is love. You know, we just can't walk in the love of God without the Holy Spirit. You know, we talk a lot about love. We've got a lot of talk about love. But are we living it and are we walking it? 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not for ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Think, think of the disciples when they were persecuted, and, and, you, and Stephen just, how could he do that? How could they just allow themselves to be persecuted and spit on and, and not fight back? The Holy Spirit. The one thing that I remember watching the movie, The Passion for the Christ, that stood out to me so strongly was when Yeshua was getting ready to go on the cross and the people were just so abusive to him and, and said all kind of manner of evil and, 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 you know, beat him and did all those horrible things. And he could stand and he could say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do because he was full of the Holy Spirit. He's God, but he gave us the same power, see? And I remember just starting to weep, thinking, God, can I love like that? Will I be able to love like that? That I, my persecutors, can I love my persecutors and someone that had hurt me and my family? Can I do that? And it wasn't so, it wasn't to forgive them so much that, you know, it, for, it was the forgiveness was for you. So it doesn't hurt you. So that hate doesn't build up in your heart and that evil doesn't come upon you is the purpose of forgiving such evil. So full of God's love, enabling them to forgive and pray for those who tortured them. That's, that's what the disciples did. This is power used rightly. The power should not be used to bring attention to yourself and glorify yourself. Oh, look at my gift. Look how great I am. Look at, I can, and look at, I can lay hands and you'll be healed. No. You should be more humble. You should be more humble when you have a gift that powerful. And I think that's why we're not seeing the gifts as powerfully as we should, because we're not humbled enough. God is trying to humble us. He wants us to walk in this power. So they had a powerful message. They gave it with powerful personal conviction, the, the early disciples. They have powerful conviction. They, they shared the word with others with such conviction. That could only be from 
the Holy Spirit in working in their life. They spoke with wisdom and logic and courage beyond their own abilities. Power that convicted their hearers of the truth and convicted them of sin. They had a powerful faith. They knew that God was with them and would work through them as he had promised. Like Yeshua, he commanded paralytics to walk, and they did. They prayed, and things happened. Sick people were healed. Prison doors opened. Demons fled, and multitudes of sinners turned to God. I don't know about you guys, but we need a move of the Holy Spirit like this. Not a move of us just getting a good feeling, but a move, a true move of the Holy Spirit. It's going to take the unity of the body of Messiah. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take intercession. Are you willing to work for that? Are you willing to do the work that God needs us to do to see a move of the Holy Spirit before the great coming day of the Lord? When he comes, it's going to be a terrible day. You're going to need the Holy Spirit. Revelation tells us, and I don't want to be a bearer of bad news, but there are going to be some martyred. There are some already being martyred, terribly martyred right now in other countries. Do you think it's, America is exempt from such things? And I don't want to meditate on that, and I don't want to say, because I believe his grace will be sufficient for the time of need. When the need is there, do you think on it now? You think, could I do that? Absolutely not, I couldn't do that. If your child was being hurt and persecuted in front of your eyes. No, right now I can't. But you know what? When the time of need is, the grace will be sufficient and the power of the Holy Spirit will be present to take care of every situation. This is why we need to be meditating and praying and seeking God for his power. So this power in the early believers made them witnesses, just as Yeshua had said. They had the boldness and the urgent desire to tell all their neighbors about Yeshua. Are you telling your neighbors about Yeshua today? And I'm not necessarily, you know, are you, are you talking, are you not so much preaching, but in your lifestyle? I got to share with the, um, uh, the guy that works for, our, that's fixing the home after the, tree fell on it. What do you call them? Contractor. And uh, got a couple of times the door is opened. He knows, he knows who we are because he come to our house and we got, you know, Israel stickers all over it. Pastor Nick has all kinds of things about Israel and stuff in the house. So they, they know who we are. He's from Venezuela. He's probably Jude and don't know it because a lot of those uh, Ashkenazi, I mean, uh, Sephardic Jews are uh, been in that culture. And so, um, so he was sharing with me, he was going to come, to, he wanted me to meet with him this morning for the house. I said, no, I have Shabbat. I can't do that. I had an opportunity. He goes, oh, you mean on Saturday? I said, yes. I said, it's the Sabbath. And so, and I said, and on top of that, I'm speaking. So I got to be there. So um, he said, oh, okay. And then I had a chance. His daughter has uh, epilepsy things. He couldn't show up for one of the, and, he, and I said, well, we'll pray for her. Why didn't you tell me? Then he told me he just he just, it just came through that he is a United States citizen. I said, because he said he went through so much trouble trying, he went six months of stress of trying to get a citizenship and he made it. And I said, why did you tell me we'd be praying for you, you know? And um, he was like, really? And I said, of course. So things like that, you don't have to just open your Bible and start preaching to people, but just let your light shine. Start shining. You don't know where they're at. And such a, such a door of opportunity is around us every day, even when you go into restaurants. And, you know, we're, we're so all over out there, right? We don't just sit at home, right? We go to this, the kids' schools, and just oh, so, so many places to be a witness in the light of Yeshua and show the power of the Holy Spirit. So they had the boldness and urgency and desire to tell their neighbors. Their, they had courage, love. They had a great vision. Total commitment to Christ drove them on from town to town, from country to country. This was the power of the early church. They had to walk from town to town to country and country. We can drive and sit in purple seats, and we can't do it. <laughs> but we are doing it, hallelujah. But it's a struggle, isn't it? Unless we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and talk to us and lead us and guide us. Their power then was the power of the Holy Spirit who filled them and worked through them. What they did was the natural outflow of the Spirit-filled living. It came naturally. If we 
like that scripture I shared, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Your flesh doesn't want to do the things of God. The lust of the flesh wants to do fleshly things. Godly things, spirit-filled things, are like coming to Shabbat and worshiping him. And prayer and praying. These are things that only the Holy Spirit, but the enemy is constantly trying to draw us away from the spiritual things that God has put and given us to empower us and to strengthen us. So some of Yeshua's last words to his disciples were this, in Mark 16, 18. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. This is what he left the disciples with. John 14, 12 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, do we believe in him? Absolutely. The works that I do, he will also do. Oh, he will do also. And greater than these will he do because I go be with the Father. Greater. Wow, have you thought about greater works? What's some greater works? I think kind of finding out where Israel is a greater work. Being restored to the house of Israel is a greater work. Bringing Ephraim and Judah together is a, is a greater work of restoration. Because we're, we're not only the house of Ephraim, or the Gentiles coming to who they are, because remember Yeshua said, I come only. Who did Yeshua come for? Only the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I think that's a greater work. I don't think they were realizing who they were in the New Testament. I, I know Paul was giving them some hints. I know he said that, you know, he made the two one. He, he gave them some hints that, you know, Ephraim um, uh, in, in Ephesians 2 it says, you're no longer a Gentile. Now you're part of the commonwealth of Israel. The covenant is promised. He was giving them hints. But now we have the revelation. That's a great work. So it's powerful things. We need the Holy Spirit. And we need the infilling and the power of the Holy Spirit today. I'm going to just run briefly. I'm not going to read the scriptures, but we're going to go over the roles of, of help of the Holy Spirit right here, right now. Um, I've got them. If you want to write them down, you can look the scripture verses up. But this is, this is some of the role of the Holy Spirit in our life. He testifies of the Messiah. We will testify of Jesus, Yeshua. He's going to testify of him. So the Holy Spirit's going to say, yes, Jesus is right. Jesus is the way. He will abide with believers. And it says in uh, John 14, 16, it says, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. So he's going to abide with us forever. He'll never, what did Yeshua's uh, other last words? I'll never, never leave you, and I'll never, never forsake you. And he knew that because he was going to give us part of him, the Holy Spirit. He will convict us. I'm sorry, the next one is he will be our teacher. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that was said to you. So when you first read the words of Jesus, you, you know, and then you keep reading the word, and sometimes you don't reread the words of Jesus, but you remember them. The word gets in your spirit, and it's there forever. You know, I used to, one of my, my things was I didn't feel like I, I memorized the word enough, and, of course, the scripture says that he will give you what you need to say. So we, we, we try to beat ourselves up because we don't, we're, maybe we're not a good memorizer. Or some people, they, don't, they read it once and they got it in them. And I'm like, well, how do they do that? You know, it's just in them. It's okay. But you remember it. Your spirit remembers it when you need it. Amen? He will convict us of sin in John 16, 7. And it also says he'll convict you of sin righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me and concerning righteousness because I go to the father and you no longer see me and concerning judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. He will guide us into truth. I don't know about you, but I like, I like the truth. That's why I'm here at Beit Tehillah today because I wanted the truth. 
I said, you know what, God, I want truth. What is your truth? I pray that as, as a young girl because there's so many denominations. And, you know, I was told to go to this one, but don't go to that one. And I'm like totally confused. What is the truth? And, of course, as you read your, the word, you find out what is truth. And the Holy Spirit will explain it to you. And then it glorifies Messiah, John 16, 14 says, he will glorify me. The Holy Spirit will glorify him. He will give of mine and will disclose it to you. So it's taking what Yeshua has and the Holy Spirit will dis disclose it to us. The dis the, he's a discloser of the truth. He's, a, he's, the, he's the one that will reveal to us. When you get revelation, it's, it's the Holy Spirit is giving you that revelation. I, I like the prayer that was given today by Marco because it was all about thanking him. It was about thanking God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. It's to empower you, Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And of course, we know the power is to be his witnesses and to walk out the commandments of God. You're not going to be a witness if you're not doing the commandments. What are you witnessing to? Your own rules? No, we're to witness of God's word. The Torah is his word. It is voice. So we, we are being a witness that this word is true. Amen? His word is true. Just like circumcision is a sign that his word is true. Those who have been circumcised, it goes along with the word. And then I've got to reveal himself to us. Kind of goes along a little bit with that other one that I gave. Um, I think. I thought I said it. No. Anyway, he will reveal himself. It says in John 18, 14, verse 21. And who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will love, be loved by my father. And I will love him and I will disclose myself to him. And then the last one is to speak. To speak. Moses was afraid to speak. Jeremiah was also one who said he was just a child. And Paul was an eloquent, eloquent of speech. We would all kind of make excuses, right? Unless you're just born with this ability to speak really well, get up there and talk without any notes in a Bible. It just sounds so great. But all these men were inadequate. And women too, I'm sure, as you study out, women, you know, they went around, they shared the word. So we, there's an inadequacy. But with the Holy Spirit, you're not inadequate. Do you get it? The Holy Spirit will speak. It says in, I'm going to read this one, Luke 12, 11, When they bring you before the synagogue and the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you are to speak in your defense or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Boy, that's comforting. That's comforting. Now you know why he's called the comforter and the counselor. But you know what I love is there's more help. There's more help. And we're going to go on to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And for those that you want to do your own study and understand the gifts, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm just going to kind of go through them real quickly here. We know also in chapter 14, you got chapters, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 are probably the two that, and 12 through 14, that expound on these gifts. And we know that the superior gift, of course, um, is love. But let's uh, go down this list of the gift of wisdom. You know, in verse 1 of uh, chapter 14, it says, Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant of this matter. We should not be ignorant of these chapters. Do you understand that? These are chapters that are going to help your life, that is going to bless your life, that is going to make you the, the disciple that God wants you to be for his kingdom, okay? So number one is the gift of wisdom, the gift to make choices and give leadership that is according to God's will, you need wisdom. If you're going to be a leader, if anything, fathers, you need wisdom. Mothers, you need wisdom. 
to raise your children in the ways of God. The second one is the gift of knowledge. This is the gift to have a comprehensive understanding of a spiritual issue or circumstance. The knowledge. I remember my prayer. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding almost daily from above. Not the wisdom of this world, not the knowledge of this world, but the knowledge and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from above daily is is one of my biggest prayers. I think it even comes out of Ephesians chapter 2 of their prayer. The gift of faith, a gift to trust God and inspire others to trust God no matter the conditions. Some people have a greater gift than others in that area. I believe we can have all these gifts. I think some operate more strongly in these gifts, but I believe we can, if we have a need of wisdom, we can ask for it. If we, if we need a miracle, we can ask for it. Amen. So we also see the gift of healing. The wondrous gift to to use God's healing power to cure a person who is ill, wounded, or suffering. We have the gift of miracles, a gift to display signs and miracles that just credibility to God's word and the gospel message. How many know we need these? We need these operating in the church today. Sometime, uh, you know, in the future, I I literally think we're not going to have the ability to get to doctors. We're not going to have that ability so much unless you bow down to their certain demands, right? That might be, that might be, it might be. So we better have the ability to trust God and the power of the Holy Spirit. The gift of prophecy, um, this is a gift to declare a message from God. So when someone prophesies, even speaking, teaching, I could be prophesying right now. I'm speaking the oracles of God. Um, There are also prophecies of future, future that's coming. Uh, The gift of discerning of spirits, the gift to recognize whether or not something is truly from God or in accordance with righteousness. This is very, very important in the days in which we live. Amen? To discern the spirits. Okay? There is a lot of evil. There's a lot of, of, of uh, deception. And, it, and we were warned of that, were we not? That in the last days, many will be deceived. Remember the, the, the uh, false prophets. There's false prophets. If there's false prophets, there's true prophets. But you have to know the difference. And that's what the Holy Spirit helps with that. Um, then we have the gift of tongues, the gift to communicate in a foreign language and that you do not have experience with in order to converse with those who speak the language. So that's a gift to actually speak another person's language, okay? Now, I wanted to kind of skip over. Um, I'm almost done here, but I really wanted to give time to this because there's a really misunderstanding of tongues in the body of Christ today. There's the tongues of prophecy, and there's the tongues of the Holy Spirit that is given to each and every one of us. I'm just going to read you some scriptures, so you can write them down and and study them for yourself. Like I said, I was tested with this very early on when the Holy Spirit was given to me, and I received the, the baptism, but I didn't speak in tongues right away. It took a while because I just didn't know, you know, if this is right, and I struggled with it. Finally, I had uh, someone that was learned, more learned than me, and, and they discussed, you just let it come out. You just let it flow. You just trust God with it. And, uh, and I remember in my prayer times, my private prayer times, I'd want, I felt like, I felt like something wanted to come out, but I just, you know, I just held back because I didn't know. I was ignorant to how it all operated. And so finally it started flowing. The Holy Spirit just started taking off and flowing. So I'm going to give you the purpose for this this gift. Um, First of all, it says in Zephaniah 3.9, I believe to me it is a heavenly language. It says in the scriptures, it's a language of the angels. You know, we like to talk about angels, but we need to do what the angels do, Right? if we've been given this same power. It says in Zephaniah, For then I will give to the people's purified lips that all of them may call on the name of the Lord to serve him shoulder to shoulder. I believe that the power of the praying in the Holy Spirit brings a unity in the Spirit that we don't understand. When the congregation can all pray in the Holy Spirit, there's a unity because, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some reasons for this. 
Um, also, Mark 16, 17 says, these signs, that's Mark 16, 17, these signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons, speak in new tongues. That's not a language because it's a new tongue. A language would be a tongue of another language. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them, and you know how the scripture. Acts 2, 4 says, all were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Some, I believe, were speaking the languages, and some were speaking of heavenly language. This can only happen, it seems only happens, now I could be wrong, by the laying on of hands. In Acts 19.6, Paul laid his hands upon them and the Holy Spirit came on them. Now, in chapter 14 of uh, 1 Corinthians, I, I gave you that chapter to study, but I'm going to just point out, first of all, we are to desire spiritual gifts. These are spiritual gifts. We should desire this. We should desire these gifts. We are to, when we speak in a tongue, our prayer language, the Holy Spirit, we are speaking, it says, we are speaking with God. We are speaking straight to God. You can't mess up with it, people. It speaks mysteries. It says that the tongues will speak mysteries. There's mysteries still to be revealed, and it will speak it. And it says that we are to speak it because it will edify and it will build ourselves up. Pray in the Holy Spirit. It is powerful. 42 years I've been praying in the Holy Spirit especially when I have no clue, and when I've prayed every word of thing I can think of, I have no other words to come out, I pray in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will go on and on and on and on. It's never void of words. And it edifies you, especially when you're down and you start to pray in the Holy Spirit. You don't have answers, and you start praying. You know what? The Holy Spirit starts to give you answers because you're talking to the Holy, you're talking straight to God. You're going straight to the throne room. Why waste hours praying prayers unless you're praying the word of God, moaning and groaning and whining when you can just pray in the Holy Spirit and go right to the throne of God? Why? Why waste hours? Why waste that time? And it is our spirit that is praying, not our mind. Our mind is tr gets in trouble. It's the mind of the spirit that is praying. We think, oh, well, I got a mind, and God gave me a mind, and I, and I just do whatever my mind says. No. Your mind and your thoughts. How many people did horrible, horrific crimes and said, I had voices? If that voice is leading you against the word of God and, and the things of God, it is not the voice you want to follow. Amen? That's a discerning of spirit right there. Ephesians 6, 18 says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. It doesn't say pray in the understanding or in the mind. It says pray in the spirit. And with this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. This is how we're to pray for one another. You know, we have prayer here on Mondays, and sometimes we go through a whole long list of the people's life and their issue, and we spend all this time, and I'm not against letting out what we're struggling with, but you know what? We don't have to go through all that. We put that name before the Lord, and we pray in the Holy Spirit, and it'll get done. Because you know what? God knows what they need more than we know what they need. Spend more time praying in the Holy Spirit. I cannot, I cannot push this enough, because I know it changed my life, changed my prayer life. Jude one twenty said, Beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. How do, you want, how do you build yourself up in the faith? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Because you know what else? When you pray in the Holy Spirit for yourself, you, because God knows what you need more than you need, than you know what you need. We think we need this, and we think we need that, and that's not what we need. I mean, I, I've heard all kinds of, oh, if I could only have this, I would be great. No, you need the Holy Spirit. And here's another good one is Romans 8, 26. The same way the Spirit also helps our weakness. The Spirit helps your weakness. The Spirit helps when you're being tempted. 
Young people, and you're feeling tempted to do something you shouldn't do, you ask the Holy Spirit to be there for you and to be strong for you. It says, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. I'm going to read that again. There's no words. Did you get that? There's groanings. Have you ever groaned in the Spirit before? I have. And it was for deep intercession for something. I was completely clueless. And I remember one time just groaning and deep. And you know what? It was, I had just got done dancing to Shalom, Jerusalem. The Lord wanted us, we were at a conference and we were asked to do a dance and I could not choreograph anything to that dance as far as a group of us. And, but I had been listening to that song and as soon as it came out, I would just listen to it and listen to it because I, I just connected to Shalom, peace, Jerusalem, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And it just grabbed my heart. I, remember, I can just remember myself just listening to it over and over. And God said, I want you to dance to that. And the dance was basically just twirling. And I got off, and I walked down the aisle to go back where the rest of the dancers were. And this groaning just came over me of intercession. And I looked up the scripture, and uh, it's almost as if you were in childbirth. Now, somebody could judge that and say, that's weird. But it was the Holy Spirit. And the Lord showed me afterwards I was interceding for Jerusalem. And right, not too long after, right, right after that, there was an attack on Jerusalem. There was an attack going on in, the, in Israel. But I had no clue. I've never, I never experienced that before. But I was sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit to let him use me. I thought it was just to do a cute little dance. No, he wanted me to do it for intercession, to intercede for Israel and for what was going on. It was a two-house conference, and it was powerful intercession going on through the whole conference. Another area is pray. The Bible says pray with both mind and spirit. So the, the tongues is a way of praying in the spirit. It says, I will pray with the spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with the spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. So there's spirit singing and there's understanding spirit singing. Hello? Do we get that? That means there's a singing that doesn't make sense when we sing it. But there's a singing that makes sense when we do it with our language. I don't see that going on here much at Beit Hill. I believe we need to start singing in the Holy Spirit as, as corporate singing. Corporately, we start to sing and let the Holy Spirit, because he's going to do things that you, I'm, I told, I'm telling you, he is going to move in your life, he's going to move in this congregation, and he's going to move on us to get to the next level of the plan of God for us. We give thanks to God in the Spirit when we pray in tongues, it says. This is chapter 14, I'm, I'm Giving you chapter 14. It says that we give thanks to God. So when you don't feel like thanking God, you pray in the spirit. And you know what? It'll thank God for you. Your spirit will naturally start thanking God because the spirit knows better. And then it says, and Paul spoke in tongues more than anyone else. He was proud of it. I'm proud of it. I can't say I speak in tongues more than any of you guys, but I'm proud to speak in tongues. I'm proud to pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm not ashamed of it. We should never be ashamed of it. And then, of course, the bottom line was forbid not to speak in an unknown tongue. So we have all these gifts. The next gift is, it's not on the nine gifts, but some count it in with the gifts. It's the gifts of administration, the gift to keep things in order and in agreement with God's principles. And the gift of helps, it's a gift of desire and capacity to always help others and to do whatever it takes to get a task achieved. We have so much help. And then we have the nine fruits of the Spirit. Wow. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such, there is no law. Does that mean the law is done away with? No, that just means you're walking in the law. That's what the law was all about. So guess what, everybody? We 
are in the season of Shavuot, Shavuot, the new early church started that season of Shavuot, and it's still, it's still going on until Yeshua returns. The giving of the Holy Spirit is still available to everybody. More of the Holy Spirit is always available. He said, I'll never, never leave you, never, never forsake you. We need this power manifested in our lives today. We need all the help we can get, and Yahweh has given it to us. He didn't leave us as orphans without any help. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I want to hit the mark. I've made it and purposed in my heart that these last years of my life, how long that might be, I'm going to hit the mark. I'm not going to play around. I'm not going to let Satan rule my life because he's a liar and he has no power and authority over me. And he, God has given me all power and authority over every situation. Um, it doesn't mean that because you have the Holy Spirit, situations aren't going to happen. Situations are going to come because God wants you to use the Holy Spirit. And they're going to keep coming until you start using the Holy Spirit. So I want to hit the mark. And remember this, that the Holy Spirit will never be forced on anybody. You have to receive it. It's receiving it by faith. It's, it's a free gift. It doesn't cost nothing. I'm not going to make you come and bring a tithe up here or, or offering up here in order to receive it. It's freely given because God knows we need it. So some would say, how can I receive such a powerful gift? And I'm going to say, glad you asked. In okay, case so there's any of you here that have never, and don't be, don't be embarrassed if you say, you know, I don't think I've ever been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, I've been, I've been, I came to Jesus and, and I came to the altar and I repented of my sins and asked him to be Lord of my life. And then I remember having baptism in water. By the way, if any of you need to be baptized in water, we baptize in water here. It's not something we teach every week, but, you know, you can be baptized in water. If you have children that have accepted the Lord, just call the office, and uh, they'll set up an appointment to be baptized in water because every step is important. Every command that Yeshua gave us to, to walk this life, to be fulfilled and blessed, is definitely um, it's important. So this is the only thing I would say to you. There's just a few little things that you need to do. First of all, you must be born again. If you're not born again, if you have not... Your spirit and God's spirit have not met and connected that there is a God and his son is Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, that he died for our sins because we all need a sacrifice. You can do that today. We're going to have an altar. We're going to have an old-fashioned altar call today. The Holy Spirit says you're going to have an altar call. It's not going to be anything to draw attention. We're just going to have this time. You're going to have this time at the altar to come, come to Jesus moment, right, just to bask in his presence. Sometimes we get so busy, we just come in and talk and chatter, and we don't really, we don't do business with the Holy Spirit. But we're going to do business today with the Holy Spirit because it's so important, amen? And I want those who, if you don't feel led to come up, you be in your seats and you be interceding. If you have the gift of tongues, you pray in the Holy Spirit because these are, these are people's lives. Each one of you is a life for God. It's important. It's important that you know God. It's important that you be filled with his Holy Spirit. So if you've been baptized, you can get the Holy Spirit if you've been baptized in water or not. But you definitely have to have, have repented and, and come to, to the Father God through your, the Son Yeshua. Amen? That's be born again. And then there's more. There's a baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. It's a gift from above from the Father. You have to believe it. In your heart. You have to believe everything I shared with you today is the word of God. You have to believe it. And then you have to receive it. I did this last week. Tom, do you want the Holy Spirit? Do you believe? Okay. You receive the Holy Spirit? Great. So he received it. He received it by faith. He was eager and willing and wanted it. He received the Holy Spirit with the laying on of hands. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. But now, Tom, you have to use it. You have to put it to use for you. It's like electricity, but it's more and more powerful. 
more powerful than we can imagine. More powerful. We haven't even tapped into the power of the Holy Spirit. We haven't, people. We're too busy getting offended and complaining and murmuring. You think God's going to allow the power of the Holy Spirit when we act like this? Judging one another, accusing one another. We got to go back to A1 again. We got to go back to A1. This is why we're not seeing any powerful move of the Holy Spirit. And you know, it's not about one man. It's not about Pastor Nick having this power and, and touching everybody. It's no, we should all walk in this power. The disciples You're to disciple them, and the disciples did these things. They laid hands on the sick. They cast out demons. They they could touch any deadly thing, and it would not harm them. These were disciples. They weren't the apostles. They weren't the main leaders. They were just everyday people like us. So this, this Shavuot, I just told Pastor Nick, we have to zoom in on the Holy Spirit. We have to. I encourage everyone today. To start, if you have the gift of tongues, use it. If you don't have it, you pray for it. If you pray for it, you don't use it. You just start letting whatever comes out, come out. If you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. But pray in the Spirit. I'm just telling you, I believe it's a word from, from God that is, is telling every single one of you. And it's not to bring attention to you. It is That is a gift. And it's powerful. It's going to edify you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to bring you into truth. It's going to do everything that you need, that you have need of. That easy, that simple. Now, right now, remember, be born again, be baptized in water. This, this, is, this was my, my five things to um, being an overcomer. I taught this, I think, one time when I was here visiting. Five things you need to be an overcomer. You need to be born again, baptized in water, filled with the Holy Spirit, in the Word daily, and serving. To some whatever capacity you can serve. Maybe you're serving is just sit here on Mondays in prayer and praying in the Holy Spirit. That's not a hard task. It's not a hard task to take that time even at home and pray for the saints. It said pray for the saints. We've all been given gifts, and I'm just praying that this, this Holy Spirit is going to lead us to understand the gifts. We're going to get into more detail down the road of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and what gifts you have. Because if you don't bring your gift... A gift is like a supply. You're bringing your supply to the congregation. And if you're not there to bring your supply, guess what? The whole body lacks. Somebody in that body is going to lack the supply that you're supposed to bring. Maybe it's the gift of healing. Maybe it's the gift of someone needs a miracle. Maybe somebody needs a miracle in their checkbook, (laughs) in their finances. Miracle in their home, in their family. God is a, he's a miracle working God. He's powerful. He's dunamis. And his dunamis is in us. So I just thank God for the Holy Spirit. Right now, let's pray. And I, uh, Susie's going to lead us in some worship. And I just really feel the Lord is saying to us just to listen to his voice right now. We're going to take, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, however she feels, led by the Spirit. Right, Susie? You're led by the Holy Spirit. And she, she is. And uh, we're going to just take this time to go quiet and ask the Holy Spirit right now. Father, I thank you for the word that was given today. It was from your word. Father, it just shows us how much of you is in each and every one of us that love you, that has has bowed our need to your son, Yeshua. We believe in you as the Father. But now, Father, we need that personal relationship to grow with the Holy Spirit in our life. That really we should be talking to the Holy Spirit every day. I remember someone shared with me that movie, the, the, this recent movie that was out, and the boy died, and he was in the water. And all the mom could do was say, Holy Spirit, help me. She didn't say Jesus. She didn't say Father. She said, Holy Spirit, help me. Because he's a person, and he's there for each and every one of us. And the boy was healed. He was resurrected. He was raised from the dead. How powerful was that? It was just the words of one mother who believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being in our lives. And we just want to take this time now, and we want to seek your face. 
If, no, if anyone here does not know Jesus, Yeshua, his name means salvation as their Lord and Savior. Father, the Holy Spirit is going to minister that person right now to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they're going to come up to this altar and they're going to thank you because you're going to lead the rest of their life from here on out. You're going to lead them to righteousness. And it's going to be a battle, but that's okay because you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will fight the battle. They not only, once they accept Jesus, they can even ask for the Holy Spirit at the same time, and it will come, and it will just empower them and engulf. So they don't have to go through all these other steps of running around the mountain. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you, Yeshua, for coming and dying and giving your life for all of us. We are, oh overwhelmed by such love, such love for your children, such love. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And Father, and move on people's hearts to be baptized in water, because after they come to Yeshua, they're supposed to get immersed so they can be cleansed from all the past. It's a, it's a coming up and refreshing of that you were made new and whole and cleansed where you can start this journey fresh and new without all the past hanging on us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. And then, Father, the Holy Spirit, baptize your people in this power, in the fire. The fire is good for us who know you, but the fire is bad for those who do not know you. But your word is like a fire, a refiner's fire. You're refining us because you are making us like that, that basket of the omer, the first fruits, Father, that belong to you, that are set apart for you, Father. We want to be the first fruits. We want to be those people, Father, that you're refining. I know it's painful and I know it hurts, but, Father, we're going to submit to it because we're going to trust you. I'm going to trust you to do this work in us, Father, that we can be the people that you've called us to be. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for touching us. We're serious, Holy Spirit. We are ser- I am serious. I believe, I believe everyone here is serious. Are you serious with the Holy Spirit today? Are you listening to him right now? He's speaking to your hearts. He's telling you, I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I just encourage you to come to the altar and let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Coming to the altar is a sign of your humbling yourself and you're saying, I'm here, Holy Spirit. I'm here. Don't let the enemy tell you not to come. Do not let the enemy. We should all be at this altar. It shouldn't even be a, a dis- it's choice. <laughs> we should be at the altar, even if it's just to thank him for giving you everything. I believe some of you need to be refilled that you are lacking, that you have used it up and you haven't, you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to be recreated. You're not letting the the words of, of the messages minister to you. You just come and do a duty and you're not serious to grow in the things of God. You're just, you're just here to be here. Come to the altar. Let the Holy Spirit minister to your spirit. Let him touch it. Let him fill you, fill you with overflowing.